Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Wednesday, February 5th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And sitting over there is Broadway.com Editor-in-Chief Paul Wontorek. Hey, I'm Look in the high chair. You're in what, the what? This is my first time over here. I love yes. it. Different view. <laughs> it's a week of firsts over here at Broadway.com. We have uh, amazing guests with yes, us today. Guys. Yes, we have Ben Porter and David Acton. They are in The Woman in Black at the Club Car at the McKittrick Hotel. It's an absolutely amazing show. They're fantastic. I loved it. We're going to talk about all of that with them and so much more. But first, let's talk about today's top five. Holy cow. Look who's a nerd now. Whoa, whoa. Look at that. <laughs> so we found out today that Tony nominee Jeremy Jordan will be going yes. into the off-Broadway revival of Little Shop of Horrors. He's going to take on the lead role of Seymour beginning on March 17th. Uh, he'll be replacing Tony nominee Gideon Glick, who will take his final bow in the production on March 15th. As you guys all know, Jeremy Jordan received a Tony nomination for his turn as Jack Kelly in Newsies. He was most recently seen on Broadway as Dr. Pomander in Waitress, appointing to Ryan because he loves Waitress. Yes, I um, saw him. He was fantastic. I feel like if Waitress had kept running, Ryan would have been Dr. Pomander at one point. Oh, because, oh, I'm into that. I'm right? into that. I would be down for that. Oh. But oh, anyway, <laughs> um, Jeremy has a slew of credits, super talented, beautiful voice. Yes. He's going to be an incredible Seymour. Go see him. Every star on Broadway is desperate to get miscast. That's right. It is time for MCC's 2020 Mistca Miscast Benefit. And there are huge stars participating this year. You have Adrian Warren, who is just giving a legendary performance in Tina right now. You have Isaac Powell, Ben Platt, LaShawns, Aaron Tveit, Ephraim Sykes, Raul Esparza, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, Renee Elise Goldsberry, Joshua Henry, and Katrina Lenk. That is the first round of stars Holy that have been announced. Moly, this huge, huge Broadway list. stars. Uh, oh. Additional names for the miscast benefit will be announced soon, of course. Um, also, this year's, it is the 20th annual anniversary of miscast, and they will be honoring Oscar Isaac, you know, the internet's boyfriend. I'm sure you know who that is. And MCC board chair Susan Raynan will both be honored on April 6th at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Um, this is, of course, the event where stars perform songs from roles that they would not normally be cast in. It's super fun, and there have been so many iconic moments from this cast. Um, and with these names already involved, this year is going to be a hard one to beat. This Broadway snowman is adding another smash hit to his resume. That's sweet. So we found out today that I'm Andy, always commenting on these I love the reviews. Yes. These are just my Andy jam. Oh, in the moment just reviews. trying out your stand-up <laughs> material on us. So we found out today that Chad Burris, who is currently playing Olaf in Frozen, is going to take over the role of Damien Hubbard in Mean Girls on Broadway. Um, Chad uh, has been around. He uh, most recently, aside from Frozen, was in Almost Famous at San Diego's Old Globe Theater. Uh, he was on tour with Book of Mormon as Elder Cunningham. Uh, he has a web series called City Boys, which oh, I haven't checked out, but I'm sounds super there, fun. No. Uh, so uh, Chad will begin in Mean Girls on March 10th. He will replace Tony nominee Gray Henson, who will exit the show on March 8th. So. Uh, Go check out Chad. And I'll Olaf's his Broadway debut. His Broadway right? debut, yeah. Is Olaf. That's crazy. He's actually filling in for Ryan Redmond right now, who's on leave because she had an injury. So when he exits Frozen, Ryan Redmond will go back in. Fantastic. Whoopies, back in the habit, and everyone wants in on the fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the reworked sister act that's happening in London very soon. Um, and Olivier Award-winning actor Clive Rowe will be taking on the role of Eddie in the upcoming London remount. Um, it is uh, set to, it's already been extended. It hasn't even begun yet, and it's already been extended because they know everybody's going to want to see it. So right now, it is going to be running from July 21st through August 30th at the Eventum Apollo. Um, Rowe won an Olivier Award for playing Nicely, Nicely, Nicely Johnson in Guys and Dolls. He was also nominated for be playing Enoch Snow in Carousel. He's also been in Lady Killers, Chicago, Sweet Charity, The Wind and the Willows, and Me and My Girl. Um, as Paul mentioned, Whoopi Goldberg is going to be reprising her role from the movie as, Del uh, as Dolores. Jennifer Saunders of Absolutely Fabulous is going to be playing Mother Superior. Um, and this revised take uh, imagines Dolores as older than originally intended from the, from the film. Um, in advance of the London run, Sister Act is going to be going on tour in the UK 
UK and Ireland. Roe will participate as et Play Eddie in that tour. Uh, and Brenda Edwards will be playing Dolores. Uh, casting for the role of Mother Superior will be announced, as will the rest of the company. Uh, but this is shaping up to be an exciting, yes. exciting production. I'm crossing and my fingers I that know. it comes over here. Yes, that would be amazing. Speaking of exciting, get excited because this, this is the daily part of the show where we talk <laughs> about the career of Lynn Manuel Miranda. <laughs> That is true. Who? This has been like a pretty crazy week slash month slash several years for Lin Manuel Miranda. Seriously, and I'm not complaining because I love all of the projects that he does. So, following the news earlier this week that a filmed production of Hamilton will be hitting movie cinemas all across the world, mm -hmm. uh, we found out today that Lin is executive producing a new sci-fi movie musical <coughs> called Neptune Frost. Now, this movie musical is being co-exec produced with Ezra Miller, who y'all probably know from The Flash, and Saul Williams, who you might have seen on Broadway in Holler If You Hear Me, the That's Tupac right. musical. So uh, the musical tells the story of a computer hacker and a miner whose baby is a virtual marvel. Uh, filming is already taking place in Rwanda right now, and Williams will be writing and directing this. Wow. So uh, definitely keep your eyes peeled. Yeah, Lynn, yeah. super busy Lynn. Uh, there are some other wonderful things that you can check out on the Broadway.com site right now, including there's a big spring preview about the 18 shows that are oh, opening between no. now and Tony qualification time. Um, so you can check out all of that. We have the lowdown on all of those shows and dates and when they start and everything. Diana is beginning soon here yes. on the Broadway. We have photos from that event as well as video. Um, Andre DeShields participated in our ongoing feature for Black History Month, and he is honoring John Bubbles Sublet with a beautiful essay. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, Deep Tran put up a, a new feature speaking with Kate Hamill and uh, Sarna Lapine, who are doing Dracula off-Broadway at Classic Stage Company. You can read that great feature with them as well. But can I say something? Yeah, yes. of course. This is a can. very important night in Boston because Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick are oh, back on stage right. for the first time in forever That's in Plaza right. Suite. Tonight's the first performance. So break a leg, kids. Yes, we get to see them very soon as yes. well. All right. But stay where you are because right now we're going to welcome Ben Porter and David Acton. Andy, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, you bet it. Thanks Such for having pleasure. me. You Paul, bet it. would you tell us a little bit about our guests? Ryan, I would love to. David Acton and Ben Porter can currently be seen as Arthur Kipps and The Actor, that's the name of the character, and The Woman in Black in the club car at the McKittrick Hotel, reprising their roles from the London staging. Porter has been performing on stage for over 20 years, including shows like Stray Dogs, Heartbreak House, Night 84, Boeing Boeing, and Frankenstein. Acton is a celebrated stage performer with a long association with the Royal Shakespeare Company, which is super fancy, including productions of Macbeth, The Merry Wives of Windsor, Hamlet, King Lear, and The Comedy of Errors, among others. Both actors have appeared on various BBC TV programs, which is what you do when you're an actor in London, um, including EastEnders, Silent Witness, Casualty, and more. Be sure to leave all your questions in the comments below, and please welcome David, Ben, and Ryan. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Welcome to our Thank Live you. at Five. Thank it's you. so wonderful to have you. Thank you. Uh, you are starring in The Woman in Black, you were at the McKittrick Hotel. You are in the club car. I saw this a couple weeks ago, and I nearly lost my effing mind. Uh, it's so cool. It's so amazing. Uh, for anyone that is unfamiliar with The Woman in Black, um, if you haven't seen the Daniel Radcliffe film or if you haven't read the 1983 novel, tell us a little bit about the story of this show. It's very spooky. It's very great. It's a, it's a, yes, it's a, it is a very spooky show. It's, a, it's, it's an extraordinary piece. It's... Um, uh, uh, to, to quote our producer in London, that it's a it's a it's a perfectly formed story yeah. that Susan Hill wrote, and the adaptation is also an absolutely brilliant adaptation. If you've seen the Daniel Radcliffe film, you'll know there are a lot of characters there, <laughs> right. uh, but there are yes. only two actors in ours, which is a really <laughs> clever piece of uh, of craftsmanship by uh, by uh, Stephen Malatrat. Yes, um, and so I end up playing seven characters in it. It's crazy. You do. At well, least I'm, two. I'm, I'm two characters. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're one character <laughs> playing a whole load of other people, aren't yes. you? Yes. Yes. Right. It's, right. it's a framing device, as you know, a very yes. clever theatrical framing device. Yeah. So, so we're it... two men in an, in a in a theatre space, um, attempting to tell the story, the terrible events which happened to Mr. Kipps when he was a younger man. Um, he's decided he needs to purge himself of the horror by telling the story to his family. And in order to do that, he's employed an actor, played by me. <laughs> right. um, 
to uh, to help him uh, sort of you, um, theatricalize it and make it into a bit more of a show. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's where we begin, and the audience are with us. Yeah. And, right. the, and at the beginning of the play, the old old man, old Mr. Kipps, he's he's frightened, and he has he can't let his imagination work, uh, and he he's just terrified because of this awful thing that happened to him when he was a young man. Right. And through the encouragement of the actor. Um, who says to him, look, of course you can recreate these characters. Just use your imagination. As we will use our imagination, the audience will use their imagination right. to, to take us to all these different places. Well, says the old man says, how are you going to create a, uh, a, 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 a pony and trap? And he demonstrates it. And of course, later on in the play, that's exactly what happens. Yeah. And so through the... I feel like I go on the same journey as the audience of developing and using our imaginations. So as um, someone said, it's... By the time you get to the jumpy bits in the second half, <laughs> right. it's uh, it's the audience themselves who make themselves make themselves jump. Yeah, uh, who frighten themselves no, it's because their imagination true. by then is is opened up to the possibilities. They, they've been taken from London to a railway station to all these different places to an isolated house and an open moorland I and mean, everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> no, and I, I'm a pretty seasoned theater goer, and I wasn't even expecting because it, since it's at the McKittrick Hotel, it's a site specific <clears throat> presentation of this play. So you're like in a, a, a little bar area. You can get yourself a drink. There are snacks um, and it, and it just it's the same that is so simple but so used so incredibly effectively and I remember like even even when you weren't scaring the bejesus out of me up, up on the stage just my my seatmates rustling around yeah. I was like terrified <laughs> and just like because you're cast in darkness at yeah. times like are you yeah. ever uh, do you are you even affected by this stuff anymore is it because you were doing it in London as well is it just does this stuff scare you anymore or are you immune to it all I have to admit I'm immune there are moments when I'm backstage <laughs> when you're doing the jumpy parts and I do when you get really big screams I'm just <laughs> just <laughs> laughing at our terror out there uh, yeah, as you were saying but you've rep you're reprising these roles what, what what initially sold you on wanting to be a part of this production to tell to tell this story um, I think one of the really exciting things about it is the fact that it's at the McKittrick Hotel. So we, we've done it before mm -hmm. in more conventional theatre spaces, right. which is where it, where it lives normally. So to have the chance to take it back to its roots in a way, to do it in a in a studio setting where we're, we're playing to just 150 people. Right. Um, so the whole thing gets very intimate and we're really connected. And that's how it started. It was originally conceived as a studio production in, in, a, in a bar, in a theatre bar. So, right. so it's kind of taking it back to its roots. So that was exciting. Um, mm. Just the idea of being able to make it, you know, so personal, a personal experience for the people and make it more immersive. Right. And it works. It, and the great thing is it just works brilliantly in that space. It we does. We sort of move amongst the audience a bit more when we get opportunities to. So things are happening not just in front of them, but maybe behind them and mm -hmm. around them. So, so it kind of gets a bit, bit more 3D. Right. Yeah. It's, right. When it's you great. were when you were sort of cracking into this, getting ready uh, initially, what what was it about this mm. character or the, or the several characters that you play that drew you in? Why did you? Why were you eager to bring these people to life? Oh, that, that's a long time ago. I first did it in 2011. Right. And I yeah. did it from 11 to 12 for nine months in the West End. And I'd been working with Robin Herford, the director, on another show a couple of years before. And he said, "Have you ever seen the woman black?" I said, "No, I haven't actually. No." So he went. To, I went to see it. He said, "I think you ought to. I think you might enjoy it." And of course, as soon as I saw it, I thought, "My God, that is a brilliant part! <laughs> right. I mean, what an opportunity mm. for for a, it's a. I mean, there. It's a fabulous play. It works so well. Uh, it's such a treat of a show to watch. Uh, and from my own point of view, from you know, from the actor's point of view." a gift of a part. I mean, yeah. playing all those different characters. What an opportunity. It's right. fantastic. What about you? What was it about this character that, that drew you in? Well, I like David, I played it quite a while. The first time I did it was, I think it was 2007 into 2008. Oh. And um, I just, and I had seen it a couple of times. Most actors have seen The Woman in Black because okay. they're bound to have known been somebody. it's been running for like 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. Yeah. 31st year. So, yeah. so I, knew, I knew that it was a great part. And then when I read it, I mean, just the language in it is so fantastic. And, and the character that I play kind of goes on that journey, as David says, mm. he, he becomes David's character and then relives it. And so particularly in the second half, 
the framing device kind of drops away and, mm-hmm. and you're just experiencing it. So when you were saying, do you still feel the chills and the yeah. horror? I think for me, in a funny you way, do, yes. I still, I have to. Because yes. yes. it's sort yeah. of my job to. So, so obviously I know when the bumps and the chills are coming right. half the time, I'm making them happen in a way. But, but I still, certain things happen and I still <laughs> inside, you know, I yeah. still get a little... A little jolt sometimes. Yeah, I suppose our journeys through the play are actually quite different, aren't they? Yeah. We have a quite different experience, although there's yeah. two of us, quite different experiences from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. And when, you, when you're in a show yeah. like this, when you're putting on something like this, I've always been curious, are you, especially having done it for so long, are you, are there points where you're really focused on, I really just want to scare the crap out of these people, or am I, are you just focused on, I want to just tell the truth of this character and get through this? What, do you ever just indulge in just terrifying all of the people sitting out there? Or is that too much to focus? I think, it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it's both. I think because you, there is no denying it is great fun making people scream and jump because you don't, there aren't many. It's a bit, I think it's a, it's a bit akin to doing comedy in a way. So you have to time something and you get an immediate vocal response from the audience and you get mm-hmm. a satisfaction from that because you've managed to do it. It's a bit like that with the woman in black. You sort of sense the fear building up and you know that you're helping to generate that. So it's satisfying. Mm. But I think with the truth thing, you, you you have to mean it and you have to find the truth for it to actually be frightening. Effective, if you yeah. were just trying to frighten them, and uh, which is why it works so well, because the story's so good and mm-hmm. the characters are so mm. good that they, they get on... They get on board with the characters, and then they are, then then they really do get scared because they right. like you and they right. want to know what's yeah. going on. You know, they they care. Certainly. They have to care to be really scared. Right. And the right. writing is so good. It was beautiful, it's, just it's beautifully so, written. Yeah. It's so evocative from the way Stephen has you know taken some from Susan Hill and then written his own stuff himself, mm. and th- it just blended together. You can't tell, you know, where mm. Susan Hill ends and. Uh, right, yeah, I would have no uh, idea. You write, yeah. you know, with the new and stars. credit to your director and your designers because as I, it, it's very simple, but just everything up there is used so effectively. I mean, essentially, just like I keep thinking, like the rocking chair, just that noise, yeah. like it's so, <laughs> it's so well done. What do, in the process of being involved, has there been like tinkering with that? Were there things that? Um, were initially there that didn't work quite as well. How much has been like sort of played around to get maximum effect think, out of? I think I think some th- I think they do get changed a bit every so often. Um, inevitably over thirty years. Mm. Um, but I, I think the essence of it is exactly the same as it was. Yeah. But what is brilliant about Robin the, Herford, the director, is that he's directed right from the beginning. He's as enthusiastic now as he ever was about it, and yeah. he's an absolute joy and delight. So every time a new couple comes to it or old people who've come back and never done it before together, <laughs> like a new couple. Right. He just, he's just open to what that couple brings to it and then hones mm. and directs that. So every couple is always different every time it's done. You can watch other people doing it and you think, oh, if I ever do that again, I'm going to steal that idea because I'd never thought of that. Yeah. You know, it's always different every time. And have you ever, have you picked up on d- audiences in different parts of w- w- where you've done it react to things differently? Like, are there certain things that people seeing this production at the McKittrick uh, are affected by that you didn't notice before? Have you seen anything like that? Or is it really kind of universal across the board? Everyone I just... I think it's, it's, it's universally... Variable. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Every yeah. night is, yeah. <laughs> in London and here, you can never tell. We can never tell what they're going to be like. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get a, a la- an audience that laughs a lot. Sometimes you get an audience that scream a lot, and there's a lot of screaming. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you can, they can be very quiet, and the jumps are just, you know, internal. Right. And you can, we hardly get any vocal response at all. But mm. you know, it, it still works. Mm-hmm. Whatever Absolutely. happens. And ha- have you been able to explore the McKittrick Hotel oh, at all? That was an amazing here? venue. Yeah, have you put, done Sleep No More or anything yeah, while you've slept? I did it last night. <laughs> last night? <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness, what do you think? I'm still high on it. It's absolutely <laughs> astonishing. It is, it is. And how long, so how long are you going to be over here doing this production? Is it touring at all or are you going to be, is it just sitting down in the McKittrick for a while or, or are you going to be sticking with it for a while? We're going to be sticking with it. We're through to, they just, they've just extended us. We were open until March That's the 8th right. and we're fantastic now that it's it's, they've uh, the bookings are going well, so they've extended it to April nineteenth. Fantastic, which fantastic. is great. We're thrilled about that. And a, as Paul was sort of mentioning in your um, your introduction, um, you you've, have a long association with the Royal Shakespeare Company. You've been doing stage for twenty years. Was was being an actor always in each of your futures? Did you always know that this was what you wanted to do, or did you kind of stumble into performing acting? 
I think I, I always, I kind of, I can't remember a time when mm. I didn't want to be an actor or wow. a performer, I think. I think, you know, school plays, amateur dramatics, then on to training, it just seemed to slot into place. So I, I never had to worry too much about what else I was going to do. It just kind of, it worked out, thank, thank goodness. And, uh, <laughs> still enjoying it, so yeah, 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 yeah. And what has been your favorite part about either playing this role or being a part of this production? I think I think uh, it's always a joy to do the woman in black, whatever the space you're doing it in, because because it works so well. It's great to be in a play which which absolutely turns an audience into a, a gibbering wreck. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> that, 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 such that's, a sadist. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to do anything else. I, I just scare people for a living. Right. You call me an actor. I yeah, think right. of myself more. That's your bio. Of, just scare more, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do make them laugh as well. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make them laugh, but only to make them scream. Like, <laughs> so, but, um, uh, so yeah, yeah. It's just it's just great to do. Um, I think I think I think anyone who's done it once will probably want to do it again. Really? Yeah. 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 Right. And w what about you? Was performing, acting always well, something yes, that you wanted really. to Yes, I think I was about 12 and I suddenly realized that, you know, school plays and I thought, this is, this is, this is, this is one thing I can do and, mm -hmm. and seem to be quite good at <laughs> and really loved and enjoyed. And so I just kind of decided about them. I didn't dare mm. tell my mother until I was about, I think I was 14. And I said, please don't tell dad. Because <laughs> I knew he'd disapprove. <laughs> right, right. And what what is it about this role or this show for you that has been your mm. your favorite part uh, since being since joining? Since joining it, it's the it's the variety. I don't think I will ever tire of doing it, and and I hope I can go on and do it again after this, um, because it's just it, every single performance is. I mean, of course, every performance is always different of any show you right, do. Right, right. But that's more true, I think, of this show than any other, and I've. I've done it now probably about 600 times and uh, in various places. I've toured it around the UK and I don't think I will ever tire of it. It's, it's, it's an amazing piece to yeah. play, amazing to get those different responses every night. It's always a surprise every time we do it. It's fantastic. Are you, do you like to be scared? I know there's a lot that's like looked into the psychology of why people go to like scary shows and horror movies and haunted houses, like that weird craving. No, no you don't like it. <laughs> no, you, I, I, you're just I, a sadist. I, 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 <laughs> I just enjoy, like scaring others. I enjoy yeah. being the... I remember when I was... Talking about wanting to be an actor, I remember when I was a little kid and I'd get my friends together and you'd play games and, and you'd say, okay, there's going to be a monster. Was that, I was always the monster. <laughs> just remembered I would. I oh, just I love it. I, just, I, had, I had a little friend and I'd be hiding around the corner in my greatest pleasure, just going Rah! like that. It's just, so maybe I was always destined to to do this. I don't. Right. I don't know. But I don't actually like going to see say you horror don't. films particularly. No, no I get too scared. Really? I, I get yeah that's yeah yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> 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 what about are you a I think I think I used to. I don't really go to horror films anymore. No, no, no I don't. Maybe I've hmm. changed. No, maybe I'm a... becoming you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe it's something to do with being in the woman in black. <laughs> right, yes. right. We're kind of we're sated. We've got mm -hmm. enough going on. We're 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 right. We're right. in the horror genre. We do. And what about that sort of supernatural element? Do you believe? Are there? Or do you believe in that there are ghosts? That there are spirits among us? Are you a believer? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I sometimes believe it. If I'm if I'm on my own walking down a dark alley next to a churchyard, I find I'm inclined to believe it. Okay. But in the cold light of day, I find I'm probably not really. Right. But yeah. I had a mother who was absolutely convinced that such things existed, and she was always like, you'd walk through a churchyard in winter, and she'd be smelling flowers. And <laughs> she'd say, I can smell flowers, and you go. Well, what? Uh, you know. So, uh, and 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 claim to have seen at least okay. one ghost. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful to my own mother. So, right. so we believe. I, I, my my yeah, jury's out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. I yeah. The same. Jury's out. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There are too many stories. Too many anecdotes or you know history for it to be complete. To, to be, of people absolutely convinced they've seen things. And I have a great friend who was woken in the night by a tiny figure in a ball which came rolling up the bed. And landed on her chest, and <laughs> you're doing it really. <laughs> yeah, And then it oh. just and pinned her. She couldn't move and couldn't breathe, and then it got rolled away again and disappeared oh. under the pipe of the radiator. Mm -hmm. 
Oh I mean it. That, so that's, that, yeah. That, no, that, I mean, there's no doubt. That happens. <laughs> that, that, that sleep, sleep paralysis does happen, yes, though, doesn't it? People yeah. have that. That's oh, a report. I've had that. I think there's, yeah, you know, all you sorts think, of... You think something's on your chest and you can't move. That's and it's genuinely it's terrifying. terrifying. Yeah. It's a genuine says, ball. All right, it's let's see. It's a genuine see. ball. With a little figure inside the ball. It's like an amazing circus act. <laughs> it, is, it is. Let's take some questions from the people that are watching. What would they like to know? Absolutely. So Tyler, who's a Broadway.com super fan, he's... <laughs> said the McKittrick Smile Hotel trend. is an insane oh. venue and felt perfect for this creepy show. How does performing there differ from other venues? But I believe mm -hmm. in London it's been running 30 years, right? Yeah. In a in a regular proscenium theater, yeah. correct? Yeah. 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 It is it is different because it's it's quite a low ceilinged room, so there's a, a claustrophobia about it, which, as you were saying earlier, really helps um, create the atmosphere and I think it's, it makes a big difference to us. I bet. Um, mm. uh, also, just the whole atmosphere the, the McKittrick Hotel is the most I, I think it's the most well it is the most extraordinary and amazing and wonderful venue I've ever been to in my life and for the audience to arrive in that strange way and you know the way you're taken to whatever floor it is we're on who it's knows absolutely uh, you yeah. know it's extraordinary yeah, and then you get and out perfect, of the lift and you're in a British pub I mean how weird right. is that it's in very no it messes with you yeah. you're yeah. all they're disorientated like, they take the their seat Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's very cool. And just the whole history and legend behind that hotel and its sort yeah. of sad beginnings and yes, all that. It, it, I think yeah. it adds to that whole yes, atmosphere. Yes, the ghosts are there already, yes, aren't they? Exactly. Yes, you're just, exactly. You're just conjuring. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question from Katie on Twitter so who said, there aren't that many stage thrillers produced. Can you think of one show you saw as an audience member that really scared you stiff? Hmm. Mm. It's, it's quite hard because there really aren't that many, aren't there? No, there aren't. No, it's, it's hard to pull off effectively. Yeah. That's why they're all loving to come and see you guys do <laughs> yeah. this. There's an audience. Truly, for it. Yeah. truly. Yeah. Can you think of one? I I know I can think of shows that uh, have tried. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> and, and trying to be and trying to be as respectful. Exorcist the musical, I believe, was quite frightening, but possibly yeah. not for the right reasons. I right. don't know. Don't think it it ran very long in London. No, at least. no, no. Right. Um, you get more of those shenanigans in London. Some of those yeah. shows. Some, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. I remember, oh, I remember uh, Misery. I remember Laurie Mis Metcalf yes. was pretty great when she was slamming him in the legs with a club. Right. There was a, there <laughs> that was, was scary. Yeah. Yes, there was a stage version of Misery that I think uh -huh. uh, was trying to be very suspenseful. I'm also trying mm. to think of that. There was something at St. Anne's Warehouse uh, with that vampire story that... I can't think of the name of it right now, but yeah, I, it's... I was in a production which scared people, actually, 1984. Mm. Oh, for Robert sure, Hulk, yes, Which I think absolutely. played on Broadway it did, with yeah. the American cast, but I right. did that for a while, and that, and that used to frighten people. People would really mm. get the jitters over that. It's a different yeah. sort of fear, but, but they would get very uncomfortable and quite shaken by it, so... Yeah, I'd say I was in it, but I kind of saw it. <laughs> no, As Americans, yeah. we all know the fear of 1984. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. I have another question <laughs> um, from, who's this one from? This is from Steve on Twitter. How is New York City treating you? Are there any favorite restaurants or stores you'd like to take back home to London with you? Wow. Well, it's been great so far. Really fantastic. Um, we've got a nice apartments. Nice we've apartments. been extremely well looked after. We've had some fabulous. Oh, you're food. not staying at the McKittrick Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> fully booked, I'm afraid. Yes. Fully booked, unfortunately. And yeah. sleepless there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our producer took us to Joe Allen's. They've got lovely producers. Okay. And, uh, oh. um, and uh, one of them took us to Joe Allen's the other day, and I loved going there because obviously there's a yeah. Joe Allen's in London. And I knew that it's based on the American one, the New York one. Mm -hmm. But I didn't expect it to be kind of almost exactly the same. You walk in oh, and really? the configuration mm. was the yeah. same. And yeah, the brickwork. And it's obviously their look. <laughs> so, you know, I enjoyed that right. element of it. And the food was good too. Have you been in New York for a, an extended period of time before? Or is this... Not extended. This I was been here been for a week at BAM in the 90s. And okay. before that, I used to come over in the 80s to visit a friend. So I knew the city a bit from then. Yeah. It was a very different place in those days. Um, and also, the other thing I was going to say about New York is that a week ago, I had no idea even what sport the Super Bowl is. And now, <laughs> do you think it was bowling? <laughs> yeah, for all I knew, yeah. Or maybe something to do with that. Let's but bring out the bowls. I've, I've had, a, had a fabulous evening. Chicken wings and beer yeah. and the Super Bowl. And, and a friend who explained it, I have now a quite a 
yeah. reasonable understanding, and I love it. It's only <laughs> once a year that we get like the whole Jennifer Lopez Shakira yeah, part oh, of it. So if that's the part you were drawn to. It's very get that bit. <laughs> <laughs> right. I, 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 I'm loving New York. I have. Oh, I was here for not a huge amount of time, but for about five weeks at a um, theatre called East Fifty Nine, East Fifty Nine. Okay, years yeah, ago, doing a, a new Alan Aitborn play called Arrives and Departures, and that was my introduction to to New York, and I. I went everywhere there is to go because I thought, oh, I might never come back. So I, I was like an uber tourist. I went to, I had a map with all the areas. I went to every single area. There's nothing I didn't see. So I'm, I'm really taking it easy this time. Good I for kind you. of exhausted myself yeah. in five weeks. Yeah. So then I think, well, I'm here for the long haul. Hopefully, so I'll just, you know, just take it Enjoy nice and it. easy. Yeah. 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 Well, we love it's having you guys here. We love having the show here. It's absolutely it's phenomenal. Thank you. Um, Thank if you, you get a chance, make sure you go check out the Woman in Black at the Club Car at the McKetrick Hotel. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Such Thank a pleasure. Much. Such an incredible, pleasure. incredible job. Paul, would you please take us out? I will. I'm so happy I finally learned how to pronounce Alan Eggborn. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single day here on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Kevin Dal Algia of Disney's Frozen. <laughs>